Today, the idea is pretty simple. We're gonna take these wood chips, we're gonna make two piles. One is going to be actively aerated, meaning we are going to take a pitchfork and turn that pile periodically. The other pile is going to be passively aerated. It's just gonna be aerated using tubes and vents. We're gonna see which one breaks down faster, how they break down and compare them against each other as time evolves. So let's jump into it and get the composting started. I always find myself seeking out these piles of wood chips. My neighbor drives by, he's a landscaper, and I just can't help but say, hey, do you happen to have any good wood chips available? Then they get dumped and they're actually dumped behind the cars, boxing the cars into the driveway, and the intermarital conversation ensues something like this. Honey, what's that behind the cars? Oh, it's just some wood chips. What are you gonna do with those wood chips? Uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with those wood chips. Where are you gonna put all those wood chips? Don't you have enough wood chips? I I'm not sure where I'm gonna put them. I'll find somewhere to put them. And no, you can never have enough wood chips. That's how this soul story started. Free wood chips arrived here and it was, what are you gonna do with them? Where are you gonna put them? So let's put them somewhere. In terms of what these wood chips are, this is what they look like. These are hardwood wood chips, a mix of leaves and branches. So we have mature carbon and less mature carbon coexisting together. It should be great for the fungi. So where to do this project is actually a bit of a concern. I don't have a lot of free land left. It's all taken up in either garden space or other composting projects. So I think it's gonna have to go right here. This is not the optimum spot because it's a hillside, but it's one of the few areas I have left to make two compost piles. So we're gonna make it work. Rules of the experiment are as follows. Three piles, each managed differently. Pile number one is actively aerated. Pile number two is passively aerated. Pile number three is not aerated at all. It's the control pile. Pile number one will be turned. That's how it's going to be actively aerated. I will manually turn it. The first time, five days after building the pile, then every two weeks thereafter, Pile number two and three will not be actively turned at all ever. Pile number two is passively aerated through a vent system. That vent system will be in place 24 seven throughout the life of the pile. It will never go away. It'll be there when the pile is built and it will stay there until the pile is done. So all of the bacteria and fungi within that pile will receive their air to do all their metabolic work through that venting system. Pile number one and pile number three will not have any sort of venting system at all. And all three piles will be watered as needed. Pile one is a pretty simple design. Dump the wheelbarrows on the ground on top of each other and walk away. How many wheelbarrows are we gonna put in the pile? Probably somewhere between six and 10. I want it big enough to have a critical mass to get hot and heat up and hold moisture, but I don't want it so big that it's either taking over the space that I have here or it's just gonna be tedious to move every two weeks. Pile number two, let's take a look at how we're building that one. Pile number two isn't gonna be turned at all. Instead, it's going to be aerated by these vent pipes here. This is just perforated drain pipe that I use to build my bioreactor. They already have holes in them, so they will be able to breathe and they'll allow air to go down into the pile. I'm going to create a skeletal structure, a framework of this piping on the ground first, and then I'll put the wood chips on top of it and leave it in place to compost with the only air that gets into the inside of the pile coming via these pipes right here. We'll have some horizontal pipes on the ground to ventilate it from the bottom. I'm making sure to keep the air holes facing upward because I want air to penetrate into the pile. In between the ground tubes, I'm gonna be placing these vertical shorter tubes and I'm just using a stake to hold them in place. And I'll put these probably every two feet. The ones on the bottom were probably every three feet. There is no exact recipe. I am making this up as I go along. This will be the framework that gets covered in wood chips for pile number two. The idea behind these pipes is to allow air to get deep within the pile where it can't penetrate from the surface. 
and this should accomplish that. The ground pipes laying horizontally along the ground will stay in place throughout the whole composting process. The vertical pipes will likely get removed once the pile stabilizes itself and sets. So these will come out, these will stay. Here's a quick schematic of the three piles. Number one is the bacterial party. It will be actively turned. Every time that pile is turned, I will be adding air to the pile through the turning process. So anything that was going anaerobic in the middle of the pile will suddenly become aerobic as air gets introduced to the middle of the pile because the middle of the pile will now become some other portion of the pile. The pile gets all mixed up and aerated so bacteria and fungi can do their work. Pile number two is the fungal domination pile. Bacteria in this pile are probably going to operate a little slower. It's probably going to be more of a fungally dominated pile because of cooler temperatures. And the air that enters the pile will enter through these yellow vent pipes. Those vent pipes will allow oxygen to penetrate deeper into the pile. And between the vent pipes and the skin of the pile, air should be able to penetrate all portions of the pile evenly and no portion of this pile should ever go anaerobic. Pile number three is our control pile. One thing that we could expect or should expect in that pile is the center core of that pile will go anaerobic at some point near the beginning of the breakdown process, not for a long time, but probably for some period of time because air is unlikely to reach the center of that pile in sufficient quantities to allow the aerobic microbes to proliferate. Instead, you're probably going to have an oxygen-starved environment at the core of that pile, and the anaerobic microbes will flourish at least initially until the aerobic microbes in the soil macroflora and microflora come in and start aerating that pile. Here we are now, 48 hours later, and I have also added a third pile to the mix. This pile is gonna be the control. It's not gonna get turned at all. It has the same amount of wood chips as the turn pile and the passive pile right here. So a third pile was added. Somebody on Instagram suggested doing that. I thought it was a good idea. And I added it later in the day when I built these piles. So we're still kind of working on the same time clock. Given that it's been 48 hours, the next thing I'm gonna do is use this temperature probe right here. And we're gonna measure the temperatures at the core of each of these piles. I'm doing this right at sunrise. So any heat in the pile should be coming from biological activity within the pile. It's not as though this pile was sitting in the sun all day absorbing heat. We'll measure the piles and see where they're at. And just for experimental sake, the air temperature right now is 61 degrees Fahrenheit. Passively aerated pile, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Passive pile, 117 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, all three piles were measured, and I measured each pile three separate times at three separate locations. The pile that will be turned came in always about 125 to 130. The other pile, the control pile that's totally static, that came in around 110 to 115. And the other pile, the aerated pile, the passively aerated pile, came in between 90 and 95 degrees. So already we're seeing some difference. The big question will be is why is there a difference between the aerated pile that I'm turning and the control pile when really right now they're the same pile, no turning has been done. The only thing I can think of is maybe this pile had more leaves that resulted in a more bacterial breakdown, a hotter breakdown than the other pile. Not totally sure. We'll see how these two piles compare as time goes on. I think that's gonna be more interesting. The passively aerated pile is quite a bit cooler than the other piles, 30 plus degrees cooler. Why is that? Well, it's possible that the air tubes that are providing air to the pile, the microbial life in the pile, are also venting a lot of that heat. In these static piles, you're getting a, a consolidated mass that has to try and vent itself through the material itself. It has to exit through the skin of the pile. In the passively aerated pile, the heat doesn't have to do that. It can vent itself through these air tubes. You're also probably getting some sort of conduction convection effect where 
heat is following the path of least resistance, the core of the pile is hot, the outside of the pile is cool, and it's venting itself naturally. Like there's a pull of air naturally given temperature differentials through the pile helping to cool this down. So what does this all mean? Well, this pile that is passively aerated is probably going to take longer to break down. It's probably gonna have a different set of microbes that break it down than these other piles. The key is what is that gonna look like at the end of the day? Are we gonna be able to visually tell, will there be a microbial difference? That's what we're doing here and that's the whole experiment. I will be following up on this throughout the whole process. One other thing that will be happening to all three piles is I will be watering them probably every two to five days depending on the weather and I'll water them for a set period of time. So if pile one gets 30 seconds of water, they're all gonna get 30 seconds of water. I'm gonna try and keep that as a constant throughout the process, but I will be watering these piles to put moisture into them because it's really hot right now and I don't want them drying out and screwing up the whole experiment. So stay tuned on this channel to find out how these three piles play out. I'll be doing video updates here and on Instagram at Diego Footer with temperature updates and all sorts of other updates to keep you abreast of the situation. So how's all this gonna turn out? Stay tuned to this channel to find out how these three piles turn out. You can also follow me for more updates on Instagram at Diego Footer. Thanks for watching this one. And as always, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.